sunny. And here we are. So today, so today I want to talk about a special kind of journal that I that I'm going to be using that I have been using actually that I have been working in and I've just had a lot of snafus I've had a lot of frustrations with it none of it has to be to do with being left-handed it just has to do with how I really want to work on something and the practical things that I need to do with that work and how the materials I was I, I, I have been using have not been serving me well. So I've been doing a little digging in my supplies that I have and I want to create a system for long form writing that needs to be annotated. And I'm sure there are other others out there who have who have the same issues, right? That we do our long form writing or at least a good chunk of it in an analog way or by hand. And um, I, I don't like to write certain kinds of things on the computer. It's not how I think properly. Um, I, I, I basically need that slowing down. Um, I even have written long things on manual typewriters, but my hands just have a really hard time with that now. My left hand just getting the keys to go because I, I, I don't have feeling in these three fingers. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's frustrating when you want to do something and, and, and you have a need to do something for a big project that you're doing. And for me, it's writing my, my fourth book. Um, and it's uh, it's been frustrating because when I go back to annotate things, my inks have been smearing and smudging and, and it's just, I needed a new system. So I thought I would explore that with you because there have to be other people that um, run into the same issues. And I'd like to not have to get anything new and use what I have, but I'm, I'm thinking that I might need to get a pen, a ballpoint pen because well, I'll talk about that when I, when I come to that. So I do know the notebook that I want to write in. Um, the last one I used, I, I, I pretty much use MD paper. Uh, I like the dot grid. It's just, it's what I like. And the last one I used was a uh, Cosmo Air Light. I hated it absolutely hated it and I actually I, I still have some to go and I'm going to finish it but in a different way um, so actually when I started writing in it I moved everything that I had written into an MD notebook and I'm still working on that one so I like the MD in size A5 and I like the dot grid paper this is not from my project this is just a notebook I took with me on my trip to Ireland and it's just like a journal. So I'm going to use what's left in here to do um, pen testing and stuff like that. So this is just, um, it's my Ireland journal, but of course I didn't fill the whole thing up and I, I really don't want to turn it into anything else. So I've got some paper here in the back um, that I'm going to use for pen testing. Start right here. So for this project, I, I know that I'm handwriting it in fountain pen for the first draft. The second draft will be putting it into the um, word processor, right? But the first draft is definitely handwriting it in the fountain pen. And I've been having a lot of fun with that and and writing with different fountain pens and different inks and all of those things. And this weekend I went to annotate some of it and I had a real mess on my hands. None of the highlighters worked. None of the, my ink was smearing all over the paper. Um, it was a mess and, and um, sometimes even made it illegible. Um, usually I could read it, but it just looked like a mess. And that's, that's not what I want from, from my, my first draft, right? I want it to be something that remains in perpetuity. So I did some research and I actually had the ink that, um, or close to it, that one person was talking about. They were actually talking about the detrimentous document ink. Um, it's called archival ink. 
I think, archival ink. And it's a little bit different than the document ink. And I have, I researched it further and I have some issues with the ink as far as, I'm gonna do a little bit more, I'm gonna to talk to Diatrementus, actually I've got an email into them. Um, but I'm a little bit worried about it and using it in a fine fountain pen. If I was using, you know, a thirty-dollar pen, maybe. But I really, I, I really want to continue to write with this pen. It's my most comfortable pen for long-form writing. This is a Sailor Pro Gear, not a slim, just a regular Pro Gear with a medium nib, and um, it is just an incredibly comfortable pen. If um, I've got a, another Sailor here, which is more the size of a Pro Gear Slim as far as this part. And you can see there is a difference. This one is bigger, right? So it's just so much more comfortable um, when, when you're writing with it for a long time. So um, I was using all different pens and all different colors and, and all of that. And I have decided that I, I don't want to put document ink in all of my pens. So I'm just going to stick with one pen for this. And this, I chose this one because it's the most comfortable. So this is the next best thing that I found to the archival ink. It's by the same company. Um, it is known to be, I've been using it in fountain pens for a long time. I have two colors. I've got brown and black. I've got a sample of a green gray. Now the only thing is for my aesthetic for this, which is important to me, I don't like it th so dark, right? And, and opaque. I want a little bit of lightness. I prefer a gray. Even the, even the document gray, which I have a sample of, is too dark for me. So what I discovered is that they sell a dilution serum. And the dilution or solution, um, the dil you can use it with any detrimentous document ink and you can mix the inks to get a new color and then put it in a little bottle and put some of the dilution serum or s um, fluid in it, solution, and then shake it up and you've got a custom ink that is still document ink. All right, so it's made by Detrimentus for that purpose. And so I did find it, it's not that expensive. You get a huge bottle of it and it will probably last me the rest of my life. And I think I think it's a really good thing because I can take the Detrimentus document inks that I have and mix them to create new colors. I mean, this bottle of ink, I mean, these last me, you know, three, four, five years sometimes. This one maybe not as long because I'm gonna use it a lot. Um, so. I, I think it's a good solution. So I put the ink undiluted. You don't want to put water in fountain pen ink ever, okay? Um, it just will mess with the viscosity and the flow of the ink. The ink is a certain viscosity. Um, yeah, so I am, I'm just going to make some marks on this paper because this is the paper that I definitely um, want to use and am using for this project. So I'm just going to make some X's. Um, and see how it, it's really dark, which I love in things like my Hobonichi, but on this paper, I don't love it. But this pen is just a joy to write with for a really long time. The, um, the nib is super wonderful. It's got that beautiful sailor feedback, but it's smooth. It's delightful and it's it's springy. It's softer. Um, it's not a flex nib by any means. You don't want to flex this nib, but it just has some like, cushion to it when you're writing, which is fantastic. Because if I were going to write for a long time with something like a regular steel nib from Sailor, it's just too hard. Um, there's no give. It's like taking a really long walk on cement versus taking a really long walk on grass. You know, so. Um, it's just a different feeling. So I've, I've got a bunch here. I can add more if I want to. But the main thing is, is because I want to test things with it, you know, and see how it works. Um, That's probably too many. But I'm going to let this dry because I don't annotate um, for, for a while, for days and days, maybe weeks. So um, it, you know, I, I, I it's not going to be like fresh. So I'm going to let this dry for a while. Um, I also want to 
sometimes um, I, I want to use, um, I, I like gel pens. And so I have been using just a gel pen and boy, was that a mess. I had no idea. So I'm just, I, I, I have the one I was using here, a couple of them. Um, these are just the Muji gel pens. They're really, you buy them, you know, by the dozen for a few bucks. And I like them because they're like really fine. I love gel pens. And um, so this one, I'm going to write the name. This is the Muji 0.38. And just so I can show you what happened, right? And it's just unacceptable. This is the high tech C, which I really love to write with. And this is a point, um, point two five. And it's super hard to find ball points in these sizes. They have needle points, um, needle tips, um, but they're not as fine as gel pens, right? Um, and then this was the other one, which I really love because it's a soft black. This is the Muji Erasable. Um, I can't even spell Muji E. And this is a 0.4. It's lovely to write with. It's probably my favorite. I absolutely love it. And the good thing about this is, is that you can erase it. So if I go in um, and I'm not happy with something, I can erase it just like I would use a pencil. And that's often why I use this pen. All right, it's going to be cleaner and neater in my notebook. The pencil won't transfer, but um, it's erasable. Super cool. And then, um, so then I, I went through all my ballpoints. I have this one from the church I used to work at. And it's I keep this in my desk because it has a stylus on it, which I love. Um, but this is a ballpoint. But it's way too thick for me. That's like a 0.7, right? And I just, I can't write with that thick of a line. for what, When I need a ballpoint, it's because I want a finer line than this. This kind of medium nib allows me to write really quickly and very expressively and just my, my, my pen can keep up with my brain. But sometimes I want to write smaller and I can't do it with a pen like that, right? So that's... The reason for a ballpoint pen and then this is another ballpoint that I found both of these are too um, they're too thick so this is a, a Fisher Fisher space pen and it's a brown ink which I don't really want for this I want a gray all right but just to just to test some of the things with that and see see what happens I did way too many there all right, I'm going to let this dry for a while and then um, come back and we'll talk about things you need for annotation. Okay, so I let this dry for quite a long time and it's it's really fine. And again, it would be weeks before I would annotate my work. I, I let it sit for a while. So what is annotation? So when, um, it, it, most of you I'm sure know, but, but if you're like... Think back to when you were in school or um, anytime you're writing and then editing something and refining it. Like on a word processor, we can just hit the key and back it up and change things. But the problem with that for me when I'm writing something that's a longer piece of work is that, I mean, unless you get into a really heavy duty editing software, which I am not. I'm just not that technologically good with those things. I've tried a couple of them, and to me, they were more of a hassle than, than I, I, I like to work with. Um, but there's no record, right? If you just erase and change and that there's no record of what, you, what you've done. And sometimes, actually, a lot of times, if I edit something and then I, I keep working and then I think back later, ooh, you know, I need to change that back. It's not working this way. And then it's gone. So if I have a draft of it that's annotated, I have, right, I have records of everything. And so when I write by hand, quickly, freely with a fountain pen, is a first draft. It's a first rough draft. So one of the things that I like to use um, for annotating are um, clean dot markers. And I, I've chosen three. I have some by Zig. 
zig clean color dots um i've got two here i've got one in oatmeal and one in grayish green and then i've got one by maru and i just chose these because i just i chose a color palette that i liked with this paper basically um so i'll show you those in a little bit but first the most important thing for me is highlighters because i will highlight text as i go and um, and change things, you know, and so I that's where I started getting into so much trouble because I was highlighting the fountain pens and I'm going to show you right here what happens. So this is regular fountain pen ink and I highlight it and it just smears, right? And um, I mean, sometimes if you if you really swipe it over, it, it smears so much that um, it disappears, right? So there are a few different highlighters that I've always liked to use, and um, and I, mo I I annotate my books. So, for instance, a book that I'm I'm working through right now. Where is it? Um, no. Well, I highlight the text in a book. I don't know where it is right now. Oh, here it is. Um, so, in other words, I, I do this. Right. And that's the main thing that I use highlighters for every day. I write in my books and sometimes I write in the margins, too, if I have thoughts about things. Um, but when I'm editing a manuscript, um, I've never done one in fountain pen before. I just always used a ballpoint pen in, the, in those days. Um, it was fine. It was never a problem. But fountain pen, it's a problem. And gel pen, it's a problem. So my favorite... Um, my, probably my favorite highlighters are Tombow brush markers. And if I, this is the dried document ink and it still um, smears a little bit, all right? And then down here, if I look, see how it still, it still smears. And I'm gonna have to clean this off each time. Down here, this is the Muji, smears. This is the High Tech C, smears a little bit. Not too bad because it's so fine, I think. But it does a little bit. Um, that Muji, the erasable Muji, it's okay. Ballpoint is fine. Ballpoint is fine. So that this is these are my favorite, right? But even with the document ink, it they just they smear it. So I I will still keep these because I might use them to um, highlight areas of the page where I want to go back and write on top of it. And I chose these two colors. So I'm gonna flip over here and just sort of put down the palette. And these colors are, I love them on this notebook. This is um, Tombow 850 and this is Tombow 291. I don't know if that, they don't have the names of the colors, they're just numbers. But they're really pretty on Muji paper. So that's that. I can't use them to highlight though, right? So my next favorite, are the mild liners and um and even these i mean the the zig clean dots so i can i can use these to highlight but it smears all right even the document ink so it's just not an option so the mild liner is my second because they have so many soft colors and i really love the gray to highlight and it's okay it's okay it's not great on the muji um, it's fine. On the high tech, it's fine. Ballpoint, fine. Fisher, fine. So the, the um, Zebra Mild Liner is perfect. It also has a, a bullet tip on the other side that I can annotate, but it's a little bit thick for, for me. So this one's a possibility, but not with the document ink, right? Okay. The next favorite is the Monami Live Color. And again, chisel tip, if I go over the document ink, it's it smudges, all right? And the Muji, but yep, high tech no, that Muji ballpoint, it's not going to smudge. And I've pretty much decided that ballpoint is gonna be the way to go. Here's a regular fountain pen just crazy, not, and really not much better with the document ink. Okay, so that one's, that one's out. The Ninipi. <clears throat> the, 
This is the best, okay? Out of all the ones I've used, the Ninipi. This is called Ninipi. Um, it is a dual tip highlighter and marker. So on the other side, it's got a fine liner that you can annotate with if you, if you want to just flip them around and do it. Um, but this has been the best. And then it doesn't really smear the Muji that much, not the high tech at all. Either Muji and ball points, of course, are going to be fine always. All right. So this is the clear winner for me out of all. And then this one, I really need a red one because in the past, I have used a red highlighter to X out things that I think I want to get rid of. So I'll go through whole things. Now look, this one works, right? And it works with pretty much everything except for the two gel pens on the top. But it's great on ballpoint. So this and this work okay. The problem with this one, and it's the reason why it works, is that it's erasable. This is a Pilot Frixion, right? And that means that it erases with heat. Oh, I had something on there. Hold on. It was dirty. It comes with this little rubber tip on the bottom, and when you move it, it erases it, just like the Muji. Um, the Muji erasable, right? It's going to also erase that. So, so it's just dirty. So this is super handy, but the thing is, is that it will disappear in the heat. So if I ever in the summer took my book out with me and accidentally left it in the car, it's possible that all my my highlighting would disappear. <laughs> it's just, it's just, that's just the way it is. I, I don't think I have to worry too much about that. So I am going to just um, stick with this for my red highlighter. And this is just going to be it. If I find that this is a problem, that's why I have this because I can go in and I can highlight um, the gray highlighter right? So where the Ninny Pie is, I can just put a color dot and that reminds me that that is X'd out, all right? So those are my highlighters, all right? So let me just put those over here. So I've got the Ninny Pie and I've got this, which is meant to stand out above everything else. I've got my clean dot markers, this one, um, for brighter things. And I, I definitely need three colors for annotation, the way, the way I work through a draft. Okay, so there I go so far, all right? Now there are some other things that I do. Um, and that is, I make notes in the sidelines, and that's where the annotation part comes in. So I have these. These are by um, Iconic. They're the Listy Lo Fuch, and they, this is Pale Vermilion. They come in a, a set, so you can get them at Jet Pens. And they write really fine, and this one I've had for like three years, and it's already, it's it's running out, so I need to I need to get a new one, but it's like a fine liner. And on the other side, it's a highlighter. So I tried this and it works great, right? It works great, not with the Muji, that's okay, because I'm gonna use a ballpoint, but it's great with a ballpoint too. So this adds to my annotation and my highlighters. I can use both. And I've got three colors, I've got that one, I've got this one, which is a gray. So it just adds, you know, I, I have more colors I can I can play with. And then these, um, this is the standout one, right? This one is the odd duck. But you can see here, this one still writes fairly well. And I can write in the margins with this really fine tip. And it, it's perfect. And I can also write in the margins with um, with this one. And you really want a fine tip, right? To do that. Okay. And then I have two other ones. Um, these are a little bit thicker. And 
I'm not sure why I would need these, but these are the um, Zebra Quick Art. And I've got this one, which goes really nicely with it. I have a bunch of these. Um, this one is, they never have the colors. It's color 26. And the Zebra Quick Art markers. And then I've got this one, which is just sort of a cool gray. I don't know if I'll need them because I'll show you why. Um, they're a little bit too thick for annotation, but I might use them to take notes elsewhere. And I like the colors. I like the palette of vermilion, blue, and gray. And that, and it just goes, if I take this one off, right, it just goes really well with the Muji notebook, especially if I lighten up this, um, the black for my, um, for this. So this will end up being more like a gray like this. I, I'm going to mix it. So this is the fountain pen for the main draft. Hopefully this isn't boring you. But if nothing else, you're seeing what works on this paper, right? And with fountain pen inks and, and all of that. So I also have three pencils. Um, one of them is just to write with. And it's a, a number three um, HB lead. And this is a Tombow Mono, a monograph pencil. I love them. They shake and they have a great twisting eraser. So I don't have to keep a separate eraser. And sometimes I do like to, to use pencil. And so um, I've got it in, oops, I've got it in graphite and I've got it in orange, vermilion, and I've got it in aqua. And you just buy the pencil lead separately in case, um, in case I need pencil. And sometimes I do use pencil. It just depends, right? So that's it. That is going to be uh, my annotation system for this project in this notebook. I really love it. Um, and this will stand out like a sore thumb. So that's why it's so bright and dark. Um, but everything else will look really nice all together um, and aesthetic, which is important to me. I, you know, when I, when I work, I like to have things looking nice. Um, if you saw my my daily, this is one I just finished. Um, I was going to do it in here, but I realized I wrote to all the way to the back. But I, I like things, you know, this is my, my morning pages. And I really like things to, I don't know, it's just, it's a creative outlet for me, right? It's just something I like enjoy doing. I don't show it on social media or anything. It's only for me. And I really enjoy it. Um, it's just part of every day and, and I get to play with stickers like I'm in high school again. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that's it. It's an annotation system for long form writing in the analog style in a Midori MD notebook. And that's it. All right. I hope this was helpful in some way. And I would love to know your thoughts. And if you have had some of the same struggles with annotating when using fountain pens. And, and honestly, I mean, you know, this is the strongest ink you can get for a fountain pen without ruining your pen. And it still didn't do well with a lot of things, you know. And, and I'll tell you, my, my Tombos have always been my favorite. And it just, it doesn't work. I don't know what it is about it. Um, thank goodness they work with ball pet, you know, ballpoint. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's regular ink. They work with ballpoint. And so I'm gonna get um, some very fine, you know, gray ballpoint pens, dark gray or, or blue black or something that's softer than, than black um, and finer than this because it works with that so I can still use them. I love them. But this one, um, these worked pretty well. And then the Pilot Frixion and the Ninapai. They work great. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. Take care.